outreach connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to Outreach Connection. My name is Timothy Southers and I serve as your host. I'm really excited today I get the opportunity to talk to Dr. Orville Jones um, about their back to school uh, fair, help fair, which is phase two. Uh, but before we get started, I want to talk, uh, talk and, and discuss our theme verse of today, uh, which is out of Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Dr. Jones, so good to see you, sir. So glad to be with you today. I, I'm, I'm really excited to get to talk about this phase two of the Back to School Help Fair. Mm -hmm. Got an opportunity to talk with, uh, I think it was Judy Matthews came before yes. to our show to talk about, this, uh, about the Help Fair before it happened, and I was just blown away uh, mm -hmm. by, by so many wonderful things you guys have been doing for over, you said 21 years this program. 21 years we've yeah. been doing So, So tell so. me about how the, the, their fair went, and then we can start talking a little bit about the phase two of that. Program. Well, this year the fair was larger. Uh, than last, and uh, that was good to see in, in one real sense that uh, we were able to meet more needs awesome. and uh, to serve more people. We tried to uh, do several things uh, in that fair, including uh, as people gather, we have ministers who go out and talk with the, the um, uh, folks that are gathering to get their supplies. We have uh, uh, others who do that as well, police officers and others who come in a friendly fashion mm -hmm. uh, to, to share with them. Some share their faith in yeah. God. Some just, you know, are there to uphold them as they wait in line for registration and wait, you know, to get ready to be served. And that brings up another point that I sometimes forget to talk about. And that is some people come uh, in, in the summer session, they come uh, the night before mm. and literally camp out. Wow. So that they're first in line yeah, yeah, yeah. or near first in line, depends on when they get there on the night before. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see, you know, but that's indicative of the fact that there are some very serious needs in our community right. that must be yeah. met. And I am so thankful to the Lord that he's allowed us to have a program that helps to do that. So we, we do um, share that um, with the people that are there. Uh, we have a, a way for them to get breakfast when they come, the Salvation Army. Uh, works uh, uh, and delivers breakfast foods and items that uh, all of the kids and their parents and any volunteers uh, can partake of and uh, that's all done free and uh, then we um, have an, a place an area that uh, they can go through in various companies and organizations in particular parent church ministries and other organizations that are nonprofit uh, come and they they are able to uh, share what they do with the people as they come through the big tent they come into the church and they're able to get their book bags and the book bags are donated by various churches throughout the city. Yeah, and uh, it, it is. And their youth groups, uh, generally, their youth groups in these various churches uh, put those book bags together. They put the supplies in there that's on grade level. Mm -hmm. For instance, if a child is in the third grade, there's a list of items that's required for third grade students. And um, the, 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 the churches will put those book bags together with that list in mind. And uh, so all the book bags for third grade will contain the items that's on wow. the teacher's um, required list yeah. of, uh, of items that they need for school. And so that's, uh, that's fascinating to see that happen. Um, and we have uh, a number of churches that participates so that we're able to give out bags from kindergarten straight through 12th grade. Wow. And they're all on that grade level. But that's just one portion of what we do that day. And um, uh, the other part is, uh, one of the other parts includes uh, giving away clothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, the students have the kind of clothes that they need to have. And it's been fascinating because you can see in the middle of summer when it's 95 degrees outside and sunshine and, and the kids will, uh, kids will be there just trying to get coats and mm -hmm. uh, trying to get, you know, shoes and 
gloves and mittens and all yeah. that kind of stuff is there for them to to take but then there's clothes for the summer and you know all of the different seasons those clothes are generally donated by people who just want to be a blessing wow. and sometimes it's very they're, they're brand new items mm. and so we have given away brand new shoes from uh, agencies that said uh, we, we, we have discontinued items we want to give it and uh, so we've allowed our students to have brand new shoes wow. sometimes brand new cleats and things of that nature and so that kind of takes place the next part is uh, we have haircuts and I'm saving the best for last so, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. but uh, uh, we, we do offer haircuts and so we have um, various uh, beauticians mm -hmm. and barbers wow. from this area who do donate their time to come and cut hair and style the girls hair mm. so that when they get ready to start school that next uh, Monday or Tuesday they are prepared yeah, and uh, they they are ready but like I said you know the, the other part of this and the last part of it that happens in the summer of course is uh, the uh, uh, the physicals that take place okay. And so that's one of the largest components. So we've had to move that off site uh, and um, thank God for the Adams County um, uh, Health uh, Organization here. And uh, they do a f fantastic job of allowing us to utilize their building. And so we're able to offer dental services, which wow. includes dental uh, exams. <coughs> uh, they don't actually do treatment but we do exams and uh, then they're able to be plugged into the system in addition to the dental exams there are eye exams that take place um, that we offer um, physicals that are prerequisites for various grade levels as you're aware Most definitely, yeah. and uh, so those physicals are offered free of charge wow. and even for the younger kids um, whose parents are there and you have a, a child that needs immunizations if you bring the record with you we will provide those um, immunizations free of charge yeah. everything that happens that day is free to each family and we don't um, we, we, we don't ask them for any particular information. We don't verify income. Mm -hmm. we, freely, it's been given, freely we give. Wow. And uh, that's what we try to do to make sure that all of our students are helped. We utilize uh, doctors from the um, uh, SIU uh, program. Okay. These are docs that are doing their residency here okay. Okay. and uh, under the supervision of Dr. Timothy Ott. And, um, it's it's wonderful to see sometimes we have as many as eight and nine uh, sometimes even ten docs that are wow. there providing those physicals wow. uh, for the, for the students and um, then Vaterat uh, when it was in business Vaterat along with um, uh, Blessing Riemann mm -hmm. and John Wood Community uh, College uh, let their nurses come by and so they do uh, all of the the, the uh, prerequisites that are necessary for the physical so they do the triage and from you know it, that uh, takes place wow. and so you, you know they'll know what the blood pressures are and things of that nature and and uh, report that so this is all being done by well-qualified people yes. and um, it's acceptable to the uh, the public schools and we offer all of these things free of charge yes I, I, one thing that I was having been in the program before mm -hmm. that I am so impressed with is the number of people that come out you described already a number of people have come out but the second thing I'm, I'm really impressed by is the efficiency in which you guys have it the system down packed now maybe it's because you've been doing it for 21 years. <laughs> we've had a little know. bit of experience yeah but that's just amazing how people are able to move right through there and well I think it happens because <sighs> we have a good group of people who come together at least three or four times a year so four times actually okay uh, we do a follow-up to it and then we do some planning sessions along the way but they come they, they come and um, uh, and and meet together and there are people from all different works walks of life uh, they have different um, ta uh, g gifts and talents that God has given to them mm -hmm. they see the vision they've caught the vision uh, of what we're trying to do and uh, they're able to just take it and run with it yeah, yeah. and um, those planning sessions they're quick we meet for about an hour it happens like I said just four times in a year and um, and and there they put all of this together so by the time we get to the day we 
pretty much know what mm -hmm. we need to do. Most definitely. And uh, we have a fascinating young lady who serves as our coordinator. And I'm going to tell you, she is a blessed woman of God, mm -hmm. uh, Debbie Fitzgerald. Okay. And uh, you probably are familiar yeah, with Debbie. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Debbie coordinates this whole She's thing. She's sharp. Yeah. She is a sharp young lady mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and a, a young lady of deep faith mm -hmm. and commitment yeah, most to Christ. Yeah. And that's what's so impressive that all of these people that are there are all Christians and they, 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 they've caught the vision of mm -hmm. what we're trying to accomplish. It doesn't just become something we do. It becomes a ministry to yeah, people yeah, that yeah. are there who need to be touched, Most definitely. whose lives need to be impacted. Most definitely. And so we, we minister, we pray with the people as they come through mm -hmm. some desire prayer and, and we have ministers on, 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 on board too. Uh, to come and pray with them. Some of the local pastors in the area will come by and donate their time that's and awesome. do that. And it's, so it's a special day. But that's the first phase. That's right, phase one. Which that's is amazing. the first phase. <laughs> which is amazing all by itself, mm -hmm. the phase one. Uh, of course, we're here to talk a little bit about phase two. And, and this sure. will be a great segue um, mm -hmm. into what phase two is really all about and, and kind of how that came about, uh, needing the need of phase two. Well, it, it, uh, it came about right after... Uh, one of our early uh, back to school help fairs, the, the uh, August uh, program. Okay. And um, we started getting calls along the way that uh, of needs that that kids had, folk who couldn't attend, and, mm -hmm. and uh, needs that we missed in all of our efforts to, to meet needs, there are still needs that we, we just cannot fill right. and that are still there. And as a result of that, um, it was back during the time that um, uh, Candy and John Scott, John Scott is one of the local physicians here in the area. Okay. And, um, uh, Candy Scott was also serving on our uh, advisory committee at that time, and um, she uh, said, "You know, we need to we need to continue this." And um, we 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 caught that vision of being able to uh, do do it over again, mm -hmm. essentially, okay. without having to bring people in in the middle of the winter. Okay. So what we, uh, what, we, what we do, we didn't have to do physicals and things of that nature because once they're done and they're turned in, that's good for the yeah. whole year. That's correct. Yeah. But we do have some uh, other needs that need to be, that, that, uh, that are there and that uh, we uh, wanted to find a way to meet. Mm -hmm. And so we, we worked on that and it, it, it came about that um, the nurses at the community-based schools would speak with the teachers in those community-based schools who would assess their classes and see uh, especially disadvantaged students who still had needs that um, uh, of clothing, Sometimes it's clothing. Sometimes it's being able to uh, get more school supplies. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's being able to have specialty items like uh, cleats for football or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be or uh, special shoes for basketball, mm -hmm. which is in season during this period. Yeah. And uh, so we, we, we tried to go out and meet those needs. And the only way that we could do that was to purchase the items that we needed to purchase. Mm -hmm. And so the nurses got together with the teachers. They started to assess the, their, their classes and they would submit uh, what they called... Um, a wish list. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'd submit that wish list, mm -hmm. and uh, that would go to uh, to our nurses, and um, the nurses would get together with one central uh, one central area, and they would put all those wish lists together, mm -hmm. and um, we would um, uh, take it to some of the stores in the area. So when we started, of course, Shopco and Kmart and all of those stores were there, and uh, we would talk with the, these stores, and they would go out and, and pick up these items and put them together, and we'd just, you know, we'd pay for it yeah. with the funds that have been donated for the health fair itself. Right. And uh, that, it, it started small, but then it started to grow, yeah. and so it got in 
into buying coats, sometimes mittens and stuff. And uh, sometimes it had to be a calculator mm -hmm. because, you know, some student may need to have a graphing calculator. Their family just cannot afford to go right. get one. Right. And so we, we would do whatever we needed to do and try to meet those all of those needs. And um, uh, now it has grown to the point where we actually have people and volunteers from the back to school health fair who go and do the shopping. We used to let the stores pick out the stuff but right. that got to be a little high priced and uh, not feasible. So we now have people that go out and do the shopping for us. Wow. They put all of this stuff in big totes, one for each school, and then we'll take those to those various schools and those kids get all of their supplies that they need to have mid school year, year yeah. and uh, are able to still uh, continue so because important. we want to make sure they're ready to that's learn right. That's right. that there's no impediment. There you go. There there's you go. no that's lack yeah. that's standing in the way of mm -hmm. their academic pursuit. Mm -hmm. And you know as an educator yourself how important that is because if a kid is hungry, if a kid is hurting, if a kid is cold mm -hmm. trying to get to school, it takes them hours to get their body back in shape Correct. where That's their true. mind is engaged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the body isn't functioning, the mind is not going to be engaged on what's being taught. That's and right. so we want them to be successful. Right. Uh, in their uh, in their academic pursuits. Well, so that's why that's we do what we do. Absolutely amazing. So this goes on and starts phase starts in, in phase, January. Phase phase two starts in January. Okay. And the the, the students, uh, the teachers in those various community based schools, and it's all of the schools within District 172. So. Okay. You know, and and as um, as we were preparing for the uh, show, I know we had a chance to talk a little bit, and I was saying, you know, we would not mind seeing that go beyond. Right. You know, 172. Too. I know you teach in you know another Pace, area, yes, sir. and yes, sir. so you know if if your nurse would like to contact um, Sister Jeannie or whoever the uh, coordinating nurse is here, uh, we would be happy to extend that even there. That's amazing. And uh, to other to other areas and other schools that are hearing us, you know we want to meet the need as best we can. Wow. And it's not just First Baptist Church. This is not just First Baptist. It never yeah. was just First Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a vision that uh, allows Quincy to come together in a meaningful way. Most definitely. Churches of all denominations, mm -hmm. of all backgrounds, of all beliefs. Yes. And, and it's wonderful to see us all working together. Most definitely. That you is know, for one cause, and it's for our kids. That's right. It's really showing the love of Christ. I mean, yes. that's what it comes down to doing. Yes. You show the love of Christ to people by saying, I'm going to meet you where your need is. You mm -hmm. know? And, and the nurses are, are your first line. I mean, they really are that's the right. teachers. They that's know right. exactly what's needed. So I just think that's amazing that you guys Well, the teachers are right them. there in the classroom. They are. They're dealing they with are. the kids every day. And the nurses see them whenever there's a problem that comes up health-wise. And, and, and so you're right. That's the front line mm -hmm. of, of all that's taking place. And, 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 and uh, I think that's what's made it so effective. Most definitely. And, uh, such a benefit and a blessing. So yeah, we were talking previous show to talk about some other programs that have come up around the area, mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, mirroring your, your program that you guys are doing, mm -hmm. other book bag programs, which I think is amazing. Show you yes. doing something like that, people are going to yes. say, "Hey, you know what? We want to get well." Let us do it too. Yeah. Yes, uh huh. I think that's so great because so many people get, get that way. So many pe more people can get uh, can get the services that they need. Sure, and we are so grateful to to see other other areas and other. Uh, groups do it mm -hmm. because it lightens the load a bit, but it also lets us know that we're on the right track. Right, yeah, most definitely. You know, although God is showing us by the sheer numbers of people who come, I think we served nearly a thousand families wow. this August wow. alone. Wow, that's Nearly amazing. Nearly a thousand families. That is amazing. You know, and I, to I, see people lined up for mm -hmm. hours down back to from 8th Street to 7th Street, mm -hmm. back down to college, yeah. and, and uh, it's gone all the way around back on 8th Street. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just to see, uh, to see that lets you know that the need is great. That's and right. We, we have to do what we can to minister to, to our people. I thank God for programs like Horizons that mm -hmm. feeds folk every day. Right. And um, we've been blessed to have our youth group go over and take items for Horizons and do things of that yeah. nature because we just believe in helping. Well, most definitely. Mm -hmm. My time work with the Salvation Army, seeing the things that they're able to do in yes. the community. I mean, That's enough it, even in my experience with Outreach Connection, seeing how mm -hmm. people come together and mm -hmm. are so willing to 
to help and to uh, really show the love of Christ to other people, meeting them where their need is, which I think right. is amazing. That now is. you've been in this, and I haven't been in this area as long as you have, uh, <laughs> but I've been in other areas. Uh, sure. I've lived in Lexington, Kentucky area yes. uh, for seven years. I was born and raised in Youngstown, Ohio, which is Northeast Ohio right. area. Uh -huh. But I've been to other areas. I'm telling you, but the things that you see in this tri-state area has just amazed me in the time that I've been here. Mm -hmm. which is now just going over uh, 10 years I've been in the area, uh, but you've been here um, and been pastoring for 33 years. 33 so, years. So tell us some of, some of the things just that you've seen uh, Quincy be able to to grow to and, and, and grow in in those in those 33 years. Wow. Um, well, Quincy has changed mm -hmm. uh, it, quite a bit in the 33 years that I have uh, been here. I came here as a 28-year-old, <laughs> uh, fresh young guy, mm -hmm. and. Um, and, and uh, just looking for a place to share the ministry that God has given to me and to yeah. share it uh, in, in an area that seemed to want to grow, want mm -hmm. to do some things for the Lord. And uh, it was fascinating coming to First Baptist Church. It was fascinating to see. At that time, you know, it seemed that uh, there were more people. At, you know, it seemed at that time that folk depended on God a little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Internet was new. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Personal computers were uh, just getting started mm -hmm. good, you know. Um, we were still doing the um, uh, 300 baud. Yeah. Connections uh -huh. to things, yeah. you know, <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Yes, thing. right. Yeah, uh, had type telephone. Couldn't know it. No one could call you while you were doing internet stuff. That's right. But it was new. Uh, folk weren't inundated with it, mm -hmm. and so I saw a greater uh, dependency on faith. Mm -hmm. uh, our churches seemed to be a little fuller mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. um, and. The social services, um, there weren't so many, but they were very effective in what they were doing mm. because the need, you know, was there. But for those who were serving the Lord, I'm telling you, it was a, it was a tremendous time. Across the years, you know, we've seen different things come in. The Internet has grown. Mm -hmm. uh, so much information is available uh, to, to kids, to others. And uh, I think that that has made ministry a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've seen a little bit of a falling away, but it's not just here in Quincy. It's right. not just here in the tri-states. That's right. Because I deal with not only uh, First Baptist Church, but I've been moderator of the, the oldest Baptist district association in the United States of America, Wood mm -hmm. River District. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are part of the Baptist General State Convention and, of course, the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. And I can tell you, even at the national level, there's been a falling away. And it's not just in the Baptist denomination. This has happened uh, in the Catholic Church. It's happened in Pentecostalism. It's happened across the board where uh, folk are opting to do different things, yeah. you know, and I've, I've heard of people who are, you know, are, are, are doing what I call uh, Bedroom Baptist mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Church, and yeah. mm -hmm. you know, listening to Reverend Pillow Sheets, yeah. you know, uh, and 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 and, and uh -huh. that kind of mm -hmm. thing more yeah. today than yeah. it used to be. That's true, yeah. And 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 so ministry is a bit of a challenge, but you know what I I note about Christ is Christ was able uh, to relate to the times. That's right. That's, That's why yeah. so much of the scripture is written in agricultural terms because he dealt with people who did agriculture as mm. a business, mm. okay. who, did, who, who, yeah. who farmed, who, mm -hmm. who did all of those things. And so he would talk about fig trees. He yeah. would talk about growing. He uh -huh. would talk about uh, planting and, 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 and the, the, the wheat and the tares growing together because mm. those were terms yeah, they understood. understood. Well, Definitely. Yes, yeah. he met them, like you said a few moments ago, mm -hmm. at the point right. of their need. That's right. Yeah. And I think that's where we are today. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we're at a place where we now need to be able to change our language but not lose the communication. Yes. You know, we communicate differently, but we still have the, the you know, you, 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 you change your message, but you don't change uh, what God has essentially given. The that's word right. of God. 
God doesn't change. Yes, God doesn't change. change. That's right. That's and right. And if I had time, I would talk yeah. about that deeply. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh -huh. uh, that's where I think ministry has gone today. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and, and as you continue, though, to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and I've discovered, as you continue to teach, be didactic and, 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 and purposeful in our teaching as well as our preaching, mm -hmm. as you continue to reach people mm -hmm. where they are, yeah. you'll still see folk coming That's right. and you'll still see church growth oh, take most place definitely. Most definitely. right here in the tri-states. I thank God for, for venues like WTJR yes. And, yes. and WGCA and Christian Radio, KJIR, and all of these kind of outlets that we have here because all of this is, it, 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 it comes under that same banner of what Paul wrote in, in Romans 8. It works together for the that's good right. of them. That's right. That love God that's and are right. called according to his purpose. That's right. That's, that's something that we can all use Most definitely. and all do. I, I totally agree that's with that. And I know there may be somebody who's, who's watching today uh, that is just just hearing the things that you guys are doing and, and, and the phase one and even phase two, the summer, and now going into the winter, getting and coming into phase two and just saying, well, how can I get involved? Um, talk a little bit about that. And then there might be also some people, and this is going to give you two, two things that you can talk about. <laughs> um, how can they get involved? But number two, people may say, you know, that's that love of Christ that you're talking about. I, I'm really interested in knowing more about that. So yes. give people an opportunity invitation to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. To get involved, I can do that quickly. Mm -hmm. Call First Baptist Church at 217-223-4468. 217-223-4468. Four four six eight, and uh, if no one is there at the time, be sure to leave a message because we do answer our messages, yeah. and uh, we'll get back with you, and we'll let you know when our, our advisory committee is meeting. Uh, we'll let you know what's going on with it. We have some folk that are joining us. We have a judge that was there passing out coats in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. You know, he told me I'm selling coats, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, it was just it was just a wonderful affair. That's the way to get involved. Call 217-223-4468 awesome. and uh, we'd be happy to get you plugged in. But the most important thing that we can plug anybody into is into the body of Christ Amen. by Amen. knowing who Jesus is. That's right. So if you're out there today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to introduce you to a man that can change you, not from the outside in, but rather from the inside out, who will save your soul and change your life for the good. It doesn't mean you won't have any struggles or problems. It does mean you'll never face them alone. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. Yeah. And if you will just bow your head and Accept him as your Lord and Savior and just say, Lord, please come and live your life in me. I give myself to you. If you will give yourself to him today, God will take you. He will save you. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life forever in the indelible blood of Jesus Christ. So just say, Lord, I ask you to save me and you will be saved. Today will be the first day of the rest of your life as a saved person whose name is in that book, never to be erased. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Appreciate it. Bless you. Wonderful God. program uh, you have going on. Uh, with the, the Back to School Help Fair. Uh, phase two is coming up in January. We're so excited about that. Thank you for Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.